everybody welcome back to another episode of dad cast i am jp he is nick nick how are you i'm good a little sore but good well you know if i got an answer <laughs> if i were to take every episode we've ever done and i uh traced back your answer to that initial question 80 percent of the time that's your answer i'm sore so, so I'm learning being in my forties. We're we're used well, to it. I work out every day, and I just for like two weeks ago, I tore the muscles from the low, my lower back to my neck, and I have some like bone spurs going on. So I didn't realize how bad it was. So I went to the doctor, got some X rays, found out I have arthritis in my lower back, and it's a lot worse than what I thought. Ding, so, yeah. yeah. Look, we're gonna so, touch on that. So, hold, let me let, let me introduce everybody here real quick. Okay, uh, cool. We are joined uh, once again by our incredibly awesome, a good friend and uh, front man for the band Elvis Monroe, former teen heartthrob extraordinaire, uh, yeah, Mr. Right. <laughs> Brian Freegan Hopkins. What's up, Brian? How yeah, are you, man? This dude made What's out with up? Kelly Kapowski. That's all we got to lead with on that. From now on, that's it. <laughs> okay. All right. Forget Elvis Monroe. Forget the musicianship. Just and the guy who made out with Kelly. Brian Hopp. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to DadCast, Brian. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> of course, as always. Uh, we also have today on the show an incredible musician. Um, I think if you look up his info anywhere on the internet, and it says he's been a part of every single band that has ever existed. Currently, <laughs> he is the guitar player in Bon Jovi. Hello. Welcome to DadCast, Mr. Phil X. How are you, bud? I'm good, man. How are you guys doing? It sounds like you're doing good, so you don't have to answer. Oh, um, we're doing all right. Funny, you, know, you know what? But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with this whole thing. Like you just said, uh, you know, look it up or Google and stuff like that. Um, I just I, I got to start with this. I got pulled over one time and uh, I was going pretty fast. You know, I was tired, wanted to get home. And then the police guy pulled me over. And, you know, because of the look, right? He's like, uh, you been drinking? No. Been doing drugs? No, sir. Warrant for your arrest, like doing the whole thing, right, <laughs> the whole triple trifecta, whatever. And he goes, um, he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take your stuff. I'll be right back. So he takes a minute. I'm sitting there going, what the, you know, I just want to get home. Comes with the car. He goes, yeah, I'm not gonna write you up. I'm like, why? He goes. I Googled you in the car. <laughs> so uh, just slow down. And can I get a quick, can we get a quick selfie before I let you go? Right. <laughs> no, you know, that's what I was thinking. He didn't ask for anything, but I'm on the way home. I'm like, he's going to get home. He's going to tell his wife, you pulled over the guy from Bon Jovi. And she's going to smack him for not getting a picture. Right. Yeah, it, it's yeah exactly. Pictures or it never <laughs> happened. All right. Hey, I got into, we got into an accident once on the way to a gig and uh, the police officers literally had other guys on motorcycle uh, police officers come in so they could grab their pictures. They were holding up traffic. They, they'd block the on-ramp to the freeway. Uh, to clear this and they just wait, wait, don't anybody do anything. So-and-so is coming. So we're like, what's that for? We want to know if we can get a picture and then let us go. <laughs> that's, I was like, okay. That's All a right. funny story because Brian, you're going to appreciate this. We haven't talked since uh, my trip. Um, so as you know, I was just in South Florida, got to see Joe Nichols in the Florida keys, which you played a part in, man. Thank you very much. But after the show was over, um, my lady and I were chatting with Joe real quick and a police officer walks up shoulder taps and goes, excuse me, excuse me, sir, Mr. Nichols. I mean, go ahead. No, go ahead. Um, he goes, Mr. Was... Nichols. Um, I've got the, I, just, I think it was the chief police officer of the entire Florida keys who happened to be at the show. And he comes up and says, we was wondering if we could get the, you know, the head honcho, the chief of police, the biggest guy here on the islands to get a selfie with you. And I was like, that's my cue to leave. Joe, thank oh, you very man. much. We are out. <laughs> hey, I, I got somebody here who um, I want to introduce to you guys. And he wants to uh, say hello to Phil. He's he's a fan. Uh, Phil, I, when I told him that we were going to be uh, on a podcast with Phil, he's like, whoa, man. This dude is a badass guitar player as well. 
Okay. Um, he's from the Hollywood scene. He does a show called 27 here in Las Vegas where he, um, he's Jimi Hendrix in the show. Wow. And, um, and so hold on one second. I want to, I want Bring to, him in, I want man. Get in. Say, say hi to Yeah, why don't Lean you send in. him a Zoom yeah. link? What's up? What's up? Jimmy, reincarnated. Hold on. Did we hear? Did we get? Do we lose? I got you, audio. man. You're good. You. You're good. Oh, there you go. What's up, guys? How you doing? What's up? How you doing, man? I'm doing good, dude. Just played a show Of course last you do, night. Jimmy Hendrix. Look at that hair. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> Phil, you're such a badass, man. Come <laughs> on. Oh. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. I really do. Dude, I saw you like years ago at, uh, uh, what do you call it? The bowling alley uh, in the, on the Hollywood. Oh, uh, Lucky, Lucky Strike? Lucky Strike. Wow. You were doing the jam. And I was like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks, man. Yeah, man. It was a while back. But yeah, dude, you're awesome. You're awesome. Uh, awesome I, awesome. I appreciate it. Hopefully I get sure, to see man. you play sometime, too. Yeah. What's that? I know. Next Hopefully time we get to see you play sometime. Oh man, yeah, it, this he's he's incredible. I just wanted to make the introduction on here, and um, yeah, we we talk about you. We we sat down one night and had a good, chat. you know, chat just about you alone. And I think it came right after you and I even had our our two hour conversation the other day. And um, you inspire a lot of people, dude. And I just want you to know and and. He's my roommate now. As of today, he's living here. So he was wow. like, yeah. So Before you know, I'm like, you guys hey, come be... on down, just say hello. Before you know, <laughs> you're going to be writing and then recording and then putting out a record. Right. I wanna, oh, yeah, the volume's so good. Yeah, hold on. I want you to hear. There you go. There you go. What was uh, up? Right. Uh, was... I could hear you guys. There you uh, are. What was your name again, bro? That's, that's JP. <laughs> JP, what's up, man? Nah, it's a pleasure. And what was your name again? Nas, Nas. N -A -Z. All right, I have an important question for you, Nas. Do you have any children? I don't. Okay, well, that's all right. Yeah. It doesn't matter. All right, you um, leave. I'm, no, no, <laughs> yeah. Get out! Get out. <laughs> no. What's uh, up, dude? <laughs> Brian, Nas, I am offering a, I'm planting a seed right now. I am offering you uh, uh, what I like to say the opportunity to join us on an episode of DadCast sometime in the near future, if that's something you'd be interested in doing, man. Dude, I'm down. Cool. Cool. We'll get I'm it. Down. We'll work it I'm out. Tough. Brian, you know, <laughs> Brian, you send us the deets and, and we'll, we'll, we'll work this thing out sometime in the near future. I think man. we should go to Vegas and do this one in person and watch him play. Okay. Yes. Um, on they, stage. Uh, no yeah. yeah. We're just going to, we're going to, yeah. we're going to, we're going to halt the show. We're going to do an hour long podcast. We'll jump up. Do you know who we are? <laughs> yeah. We're dad jacks. <laughs> That's awesome. Cool, man. man. Right on, right yeah, on. I appreciate that, bro. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd love to have you on, man. Be awesome. Cool, man. Well, it was a pleasure meeting you guys, man, and uh, looking forward man. to it. Yeah, and, and Phil, man, uh, I would love to get some guitar lessons from you. Yeah, bullshit. I swear <laughs> to God. I swear to God, man. I mean that. I mean that. So, hey, man, next time I'm in Vegas, we'll hang out. Sounds good, dude. All awesome. the best, you guys. All right, you too. Good. Take care, Nas. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, yeah no worries, yeah. man. Well, All, right. All right. introduction. So, All right. So, real quick. So, my buddy Trevor is the lead singer from Thousand Foot Crutch. He just wanted to say, hey, um, he said you played on a bunch of the albums that like, I'm, like he fans of. So Trevor, I, I met Trevor Trevor's, like years ago. Trevor's my boy, man. Oh, that's I awesome. love that guy. Yeah, dude, he's so cool. I, so I, I'm a concert promoter on the side and Thousand Foot Crutch was one of the first big bands I worked with about like probably 20 years ago now. Wow. Ran out to a church in Medford, Oregon. Sold 2,000 tickets. It was like the biggest show I ever did. And Trevor and I, like, we stayed in contact over the years. And we just reconnected about three months ago. And wow. I'm like posting about, man, we got Phil X on. And Trevor hits me up. He's like, dude, he was on this album, that album. I'm like, no way. <laughs> so dude, he, we go way back. That's what he was saying. Yeah. I mean, oh. it's, uh, it's, it's, am he's an amazing guy. I, yeah. I love that. One of the most talented yeah. dudes I've ever met. Like, and he's like doing stuff with just like you with everybody now. Like he's on, yeah. from Ashes. What was Japan. really cool. I think when, when Bon Jovi played in Toronto, he was up and he was near Toronto. So he came to the show and we oh, got nice. to hang backstage and stuff. And, and, uh, but man, I saw him play too. I forget where we were in, in California, somewhere out by uptown. Uh, no, uh, let me think, uh, out by, almost the Pomona-ish. There's some kind of uh, big shed gig out there and they were playing and 
we hung out. I mean, nice. anytime that we're in the same town, we hook yeah. up. So, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. Nick, Nick hasn't even got the chance. We've, we've cut Nick off to ask Phil the question. Go ahead. You know, like that, that starts off this whole thing. Oh, no, 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 that's, JP, been, that's we, JP's job. Gotta, oh, I mean, that's right. JP's. Because <laughs> JP's we normally, yeah, 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 yeah. JP's job. No, I, I was <laughs> getting there, man. Don't you worry. Yeah, it's all right there. <laughs> we're all fan fanboying out. And I, I've been friends with Phil for a very, very long time. And, and, um, and I'll get to that later, but go ahead. Please, All right. JP. Yes. So, Phil, the premise of yeah. DadCast is, of course, uh, um, we do our best to talk our journey, our path, our adventure, our walk in life as being dads. So that's what yeah. we try to really uh, stay focused on on the show. But with that being said, we do sometimes tend to go off the rails on this show and by tend to <laughs> Every single time. So just be forewarned. <laughs> yeah, right. We went off. The, it was off the rails to begin, which is perfectly fine, man. All good. But with that being said, the rite of passage, the first question we always ask our guests here on DadCast is, are you a dad? Yes. How many kids you got? Awesome. Names, ages, all that good stuff. Okay. Scarlet is six. Okay. Wait, okay. So this is Scarlet. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh. This is Xavier. He's uh, eight, and this is Gage, who's my bonus son. Right. It's a Battle of the Planets G Force. That's so um, badass. Nice. He he. Uh, I met him when he was fourteen. He came into my life. He's my bonus son, and uh, he's amazing. He prepared me for dadhood. Right. But uh, no. What's really fun is that we're all really close. Uh, me and his biological dad and stuff, and we were all at the at the sting. And uh, he introduced us to a friend. He goes, hey, I want you to meet. Th these are my dads. And we were, I was like, okay, hold on. Let's <laughs> clarify. <laughs> Let's clarify. Biological bonus. Right. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. That's so, amazing. Yeah, I got, that's, that one's my son. His birthday wow. in Roman numerals. That was, that was the tattoo I got for him. And I'm still waiting to get, my, my daughter's eight years old now. And I haven't even. I've got ideas in my head as far as inking up and what I want to do, um, but I just haven't got around to doing it because every time I come up with a good idea, something better pops in my head. And then I literally make an appointment and then, nope, 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 nope. I got a better idea. And well, here Dude, we are that, eight that years letter, later. That letter in the picture. Oh, yep. that, that's it right there. I man. know. Like, don't even eight, overthink eight it. Just go for it. It's still here. Eight, that one right is an amazing year. That, I'm eight, thinking about getting that. Amazing. I can't that, really see that. No. But it's a letter from yeah. From, it's 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 yeah. a it's a yeah. me on her shoulders that she drew that that'd be pretty cool. It's, yeah, but that's, wow. that's it right there, man. Don't even. Oh know. man, I, you know what? My kids love drawing, and for last Father's Day, my wife let them pick a drawing, and uh, my wife put it on put it on t-shirts for me. Oh sweet! Aww. And my daughter drew a baby Yoda <laughs> <laughs> holding a heart. So every time I go out, I mean, I cannot not tell the story. People go, oh, I love that shirt. I go, my daughter drew it, and she's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Oh, so those, those proud just, moments, man. Isn't it cool? It, oh, yeah. Just being this thing, being dad, it's it's the greatest thing ever, man. And it sounds like you know you're what? you're enjoying it too, man, which is awesome. Well, it's it's it's. I don't think there's anything like it, and and I think it's the best thing in the world. I do. I like when I meet musicians, friends of mine that haven't become dads, right? And they go, so what's it like? I'm like, <laughs> okay, well, you're a musician. I'm a musician. Um, I uh, I just played two sold out nights at Madison Square Garden, which is a dream venue for yeah. any musician with a, a mega band. And being a dad is better than that. Absolutely. Uh, and and guys, I I can tell you, he's right. He's saying this. I've watched this guy. In your kitchen, you and I just standing in the kitchen as where you had thrown a uh, like a superhero party for X, yeah. and everyone, including the adults, are all dressed up in Marvel and DC characters throughout the house. Lindy has cooked, uh, you know, a, a meal big enough for a an army. People. Yeah, yeah. And, and she's made cakes and desserts, and it's like probably a week week's worth. 
yeah. it was like a, a quinceanera or something for him. And he's turning, I don't know, what was it like four or five or something five. like that. Yeah. yeah. And then Starlet got a princess party and we, we all went to the princess party and it was, <laughs> it's just you guys as parents, I sat back and said, you know, you're just, you're glowing, man. And the reason why is you are older and you understand and yeah. X is like a little mini you and Scarlet is a little mini Lindy. And it's just, it's incredible. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. And you know what? I feel like, uh, I mean, I, I know parents that uh, everybody has a different way of uh, sharing things with their kids. And uh, one of the things that I started doing when he was two, when every time he said something really cool, I wrote it in my phone in notes. So now that he's like, here we are six years later, I have over a hundred of these things that he just says. And it's like, how did you come up with that? Like they do different math in their heads, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the, I mean, if, we're, if, if you guys tell stories, you tell stories and stuff, because this this was one of my favorites. We uh, you're about to say no. Well, here he goes. But uh, we um, <laughs> he was he was in kindergarten, and I was like, "How you digging it, buddy? How you digging kindergarten?" And he goes, "Oh, um, I, I like it. I like it a lot. You know, some of the kids are crushing." And I was like, "Wait, <laughs> what?" <laughs> he goes, "Oh yeah, you know, some of the kids are crushing. Um, I have two crushes." <laughs> and I'm, my mind is blown already, right? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, Quinn and Mia, but don't tell mommy. She'll be devastated. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, oh, my gosh. He's, he's five. He said devastated. I'm like, and this is, this, okay, it's so funny because he'll walk around and he'll say these words. So I, once in a while, I have to ask, I, you know, he says repercussions. I go, hey, do you know what repercussions are? And he goes, yeah, consequences. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's totally killing me every day. Well, and, and you know, I'm, good teachers. That my my little my eighteen month old calls me a dick. <laughs> <laughs> a funny story. My one of my favorite stores is Dick Sporting Goods. Right. Oh, here we go. So my son's grandma is like, your daddy loves going to Dick's, and so he's eighteen months. He's just starting to talk. He's like, Daddy, Dick, and I'm like. Oh, <laughs> no. So now we now you'll run through the house, Dick, Dick. And my wife just like loses it. She's like, No, it's daddy. It's daddy. He's not a dick. <laughs> I, I'd like to back up real quick. You mentioned earlier that playing two nights in a sold out Madison Square Garden. Um amazing being a dad is better. I, I tend to want to wholeheartedly agree with that sentiment, but because I have never had the opportunity. <laughs> to play or be any part of a sold out anything at Madison Square Garden. I'm going to reserve judgment on that until I get that opportunity, but I, I see where you're going with that. So I just, I had to throw that out I there. Phil. We'll be able to do it with DadCast. We'll yeah. Hey, 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 hey. DadCast on stage. You never know, man. Do you think Joe Rogan could sell out a podcast at Madison Square Garden with, I don't know, Putin with as his guest, you know, with, you know, current events, I would say yes. But, um, Phil, do you, with your job and your particular career and what you do, you do a lot of traveling, you do a lot of touring. I'm sure that's starting to ramp up considerably now that we're getting out of the COVID thing. How do you uh, navigate that being a dad and being away from them while touring so much? How does that personally affect you? That's been, that's been the toughest, toughest thing. And it's definitely like, I mean, we always work our way around it. Like if we're in the U S that's, and like in 2017, um, my wife was going to drive and meet us in Chicago. And then John came backstage somewhere and he said, did I hear right? Your wife's going to drive to Chicago from L.A.? And I said, uh, I go, yeah, she, well, she's, you know, she doesn't fly right now. So, you know, it's something we're working on, but she doesn't fly. So she's going to drive. And he said, she's going to drive over the Rockies with the kids strapped in the back in March. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I know that's the plan. He goes, well, um, why don't I get her a bus? Oh, and I was like, like this. What? And he's like, yeah, man, I got buses out here. I'll just get one more. 
for the family. They can have it for a few weeks while us around. I was like, wow. Ball. That was amazing. Yeah. And Lindy and kids, and we had a nanny out with them too. And it was fantastic. So we spent a lot of time then. And then, um, and then 2018, as much as awesome as the bus was, uh, Lindy wanted to drive. She loves driving anyways. So she had the kids and they drove around and then uh, they, they saw about a few shows here and there. They, she came to Madison Square Garden. Um, and it's funny, I have a picture of her sides in the in like the side of the pit where you know the guest can stand, and she's rocking Scarlet in the stroller and has X on her shoulders, and he's got a nerf gun in one hand and a drumstick in the other. And I'm wow. I, it's like I got the rock and roll mom, right? She loves it. And she's a concert goer and that, that, that won't stop and stuff, but she's such a mom. It's amazing. And then um, there was one, it was in 2019, we went to Europe. So obviously you can't drive to Europe. Right. So we had, we did uh, three weeks. Yeah, we started in Russia and then we would have did three weeks in, in, in around Europe and the UK. And then I had eight days off. And everybody's talking about the eight days off. Uh, so, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to meet the family in Italy. Oh, I'm just going to hang in London for eight days. And then I'll see you guys in Germany kind of thing. What are you doing, Phil? I'm going, I'm going to Orlando to meet the family at Disney, at Disney World. And they're like, you know, that's not a break, right? And I go, I know, but I got to, you know, I got to. I got to go. That's funny. You mentioned that <laughs> spring break coming up for my kids. Uh, we're three weeks away and uh, I'm taking my kids down to LA and we're doing four days in a row at Disneyland. And yeah. you're ain't kidding. That is not a break by any means. If anything, it's no. more work than you expect it at home well, raising kids. But, but man, I'm going to have so much fun. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, no, I, I can't awesome. wait. We just went. We went uh, two weeks ago. I had a, a day off, and we all went to Disney World for two days. And and my son loves roller coasters. I'm not a big fan, but I'm dude. You want to go on a roller coaster? I'll go on a roller coaster with you. Let's do it. Yeah, you know. So I mean, that's I mean that's the way to do it, right? Absolutely. That's, down. that's amazing. So because they call it the happy. Wait, sorry. They call it the happiest no. place on earth, but at eight o'clock, nobody's happy. <laughs> <laughs> eight p.m. Right. <laughs> 8 p.m. The face is on every parent is, <laughs> and the kids so, are like falling asleep, and it's like okay, that's not the happiest place anymore. But that's why we, we we did it a couple years ago, and and I planned it better this time. We have four days, so we don't nice. have to cram everything into one or two days. We can take it nice and easy. Because I'll tell you yeah. what, you know, I'm not the fittest guy in the world, and I'm not getting any younger. After day two. Last time we went, I never experienced the pain in my feet that I've experienced when I was walking. I, I must have walked like 25, 30 miles over those two days. And oh, no. it was Dude, terrible. It was my God. I, I checked my phone. We did, uh, we walked 10, uh, 12 miles yeah. on it, one, wow. on one, in one day. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and some of it was pushing the stroller with both of the kids in it. Cause they're like, my legs are tired. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's a good workout. You know, I got a couple. I got a couple of questions here. You're sitting in where? Where are you right now? I'm in uh, New York City, in yeah, Soho. And, and for the doing what? Because you live in LA now, right? Or I live in LA yeah. now. Yes. Yeah. Um, I'm we're, I'm I'm rehearsing with uh, Bon Jovi for dates in April. That's that's amazing. And so here's the thing: you got to tell everybody like the story about landing this gig because I, I know you as Phil X from powder. I mean, I, I used to go back in the days, dude. And, uh, I was in Asa Cruz and I would go watch. Was. Yeah. Your hair was spiked. Um, you had the most like amazing show. You had girls on, on, well, it started at the gig, you know, yeah. on, uh, what was it? Santa Monica. Oh, no, yeah, Melrose. Melrose. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I knew him. I, I know him from Sidonex. Holy smokes! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> wow. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. I just had to throw that out. Yeah, there. but but you know, and you had the the girls on on in the air. You know, yeah. aerial stuff and giants and 
And all I knew was this dude's a badass. And, um, and I, I got to know you back then and I would just come support and watch these shows. And then to find out, you know, sitting and eating with you at from times of running into you and, and all the records you played on all the albums that doesn't have your name on it because you just got paid to play on the record and they're not telling you or the records that you did play on and the guys are having to learn it to the day that you're sitting in, in, in a band. I'm, I mean, we used to open up for steel Panther, you and I, and the night that we were sitting there and I remember this just like you do, like, we were singing Living on a Prayer with, with Michael Starr, you know, on stage and going, oh, this is amazing. To now you're singing it with John on stage to Madison Square Garden and, and, and wherever around the world, you know? So how did you get this gig? Um, it's so bizarre. It's so, uh, you know, uh, I'm a science guy, like... Uh, you know, things happen and you and you read into it and sometimes maybe you read into a little much, but sometimes you're on the money and it's just uh, everything, you know, people say it's being at the right place at the right time. But I think it's if you have to deliver, if you're at the right place at the right time and you don't deliver, then nothing's going to happen. But I do feel like it's just at the right time. I was at Henson Studios and um, John Shanks, who's in the band now, but he was just producing um, the band at the time. And uh, he didn't know who I was. And then one day he knew who I was and he came up to me and he said, man, I couldn't stop watching your Fred and Americana videos last night because he's a guitar, guitar collector. So he's like searching for a particular Les Paul and then bang, I'm in the top three playing that guitar and and then he goes down the rabbit hole and he watches like five hours of phil x videos and then he comes up to me at henson and he goes dude you're funny and it sounds like you can play and sing anything <laughs> and uh, and then he he called me two weeks later because he got my number he goes phil it's john shanks i met you a couple of weeks ago i think i have a gig for you and i'm like what is it and he said i can't tell you over the phone <laughs> And you come to my studio tomorrow. And uh, so I did that and I came in and he just, it was really weird. He goes, here's a contract. Here's a statement of confidentiality. Uh, they might need you to fill in for Richie Sambora. <laughs> I was like, uh, wait, that's not even possible. How could somebody even do that? <laughs> and then, and then I guess it, uh, it turned into me doing it, but um they put me on hold for a little bit. Basically, I had to learn a show and maybe I'll show up. Maybe maybe I'll get the call. Maybe I won't get the call. You just got to be ready just in case. And the just in case happened. So it was April 14, 2011, when John Bon Jovi actually left me a message. And he said, and he basically said, Phil, John Bon Jovi calling. I'm calling. Here's my number. Oh, no. Wow. So I basically Dude. called him back and and he said, uh, we want to fly into New York to rehearse with the band at the end of the month and then put you on hold for May. And then when I f the day I flew to New York, Richie went into rehab. So on hold for May became you're doing May, which the first show being in three days in front of 50,000 people. Ooh. So, and then I know a lot of people ask, hey, were you nervous? But I really didn't have time to be nervous. I really... Right. I had to stay out of my head. If I would have got into my head, I would have tripped up and they would have sent me home. I'm pretty sure. But I just said, you, you, but you got to do it to yourself, right? You got to, yeah. you got to work. You got to be your, your, your best cheerleader to, and be the best listener to yourself and say, dude, you've been singing and playing your whole life. It's just Bon Jovi songs. Go. <laughs> now, now that you have time to reflect on the, those moments, and if you were to compare the two, uh, one being nervous for stepping out on the stage in front of 50,000 people playing as now the guitarist for Bon Jovi or witnessing and having the birth of your first child, which, which one of those two would be crazier for you? Well, it's a, a missed X's birth okay. by a few 
So I was in, I was in uh, Chicago and my wife said, I think this is it. And this is John. Not only did he offer my, my wife a bus in 2017, way back in 2013, when everybody thought Richie was coming back, he still said, Hey, if you get the call that it's time, wherever we are in the U S I will just fly you home. Don't worry about it. You know, he's just really cool. And, uh, Unfortunately, she called me when I was in Chicago and she said, I think this is it. And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> because, I mean, I don't want to get, you know, John to fly me home via jet and $60,000 worth of fuel for uh, a false alarm, you know? Right. So she was like, you know what? Let me call you back. And she calls me back. She goes, you know what? Everything calm down. I'm good. So I get in on the jet with the band and fly to New York for the next night. And, and it's also, also a day off, too. So she calls me at four in the morning, New York time. And she said, no, this is really it. When, I'm like, I was just in Chicago. And I'm, in, I'm farther. <laughs> so I call Scott Casey, our road manager, and I go, it's time. And he goes, I'll call you back. And, and mind you, again, this is four, thir- four o'clock in the morning. He calls me back and he goes, look, the Signature Airport is closed, but I got a United flight at 530. I got a car coming to take you to the JFK. And, you know, well, maybe it was 630. So anyways, and this is, I just, I just missed it. But uh, it was basically. You were there? It's kind of bizarre too, because I was on the plane. I, I didn't get any sleep before that. I nodded off. I woke up and I'm, I'm, I got to get, I can't get Wi-Fi, but at 30,000 feet, I get a text from my buddy Clint who drove Lenny to the hospital. And it says your son was born at 438 this morning. Oh. So I'm split down the middle. Right. One half is like, I missed it. And the other half is, I'm a dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'm, I get up, I go to the bathroom, I walk out and there's all the flight attendants are in that area. And they're like, Hey, you missed breakfast. You want a water or anything? And I'm like, I'm a dad. <laughs> and they're like, that's really nice. Do you want some water? And I'm like, no. I mean, I just became a dad like right. 10 minutes ago. And they're like, <laughs> what? So it was kind of like that. So, and, you know, they really know how to handle stuff. Like I walk off the plane and this guy goes, Phil X. And I go, yes. He goes, come with me. We'll get the car. And we're walking right out of the airport. And I'm like, what about my luggage? And he said, there's another car for your luggage. We got to get to the hospital. And I was like, Aww. Man, these guys know how to do it. (laughs) (laughs) So I get to the hospital and, uh, okay, so I didn't see the birth, but when I first picked Xavier up and helped, it was like holding my heart. Yeah. And I thought, I don't care about anything else right now. So I'm there. Um, I'm doing first baby stuff, you know, watching everything come out and everything go in and, and, and just learning how to, you know, wrap them and all this stuff. And then Scott Casey calls and I go, I better get this. I go, Hey, he goes, you there? Everything good. I go, everything's great. He's like, we're going to need you to play Connecticut tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, to, and I said, uh, can we talk about this later? And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I hang up and I could just see the widespread panic amongst the production staff. Oh yeah. Right. Right. He said, we need to talk later. I don't know if he's going to do the cake and like that. Right. So he gives me a couple of hours to ease into daddyhood. And then he calls and he says, look, we want to make this as painless as possible. A car is going to pick you up at the, at the hospital tomorrow morning. They're going to take you to the airport. You'll have the jet take you to Connecticut. And then after the show, you'll get on another jet that will bring you right back. You'll be gone for 16 hours max. Oh, wow. And I was like, I can do that. (laughs) But you know what sucks? I'm going to tell you guys what sucks right now. Being in a private jet by yourself. (laughs) Uh, Right? (laughs) Because you can't go, is this awesome or what? (laughs) There's nobody there. Right? (laughs) Well, that's 13, you still had cell phones and FaceTime. I mean, you, you could have yeah, at least, you know, social media it up and, and you know, maybe. But yeah, you know, you know, you know I, I'm going to I'm not going to lie to you. I'm I don't feel that horrible for you when it comes to yeah. that. <laughs> but okay, This is a really cool thing, though. I get there and 
I mean, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. I'm in shock. I'm kind of like, you know, I get to the venue. I'm late because they had to land at a farther airport because of crosswinds. And then when I get in the car, how long is this ride? 45 minutes. Oh, it looks like an hour now. There's a wreck on the 19. That kind of shit, right? So it's getting there is just taking forever. And then I walk on stage and Takumi, my tech, puts a guitar on me. And I'm like, what is this thing? Yeah, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> And then John comes over, gives me a hug and goes, congrats, daddy. What do you want to play? I'm like, it's starting to register that I have to play. <laughs> so we start doing a couple of wow. songs for Soundtrack. And then I go grab a bite. And uh, it was it was pretty crazy. Wow. So were, was, you, it, were you there for the birth of the girl, of your girl? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So you made up for a, that one then. So how did, how did that experience go for you? That, it was, I, I thank my wife for it being so quick. Like, first of all, we, my daughter uh, was about three weeks early. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we weren't expecting it, but her, we went to get a checkup and she says, uh, I, I think, I think we're about to, to go. And I'm like, what do you mean about to go? <laughs> so we went home. I took X home and we got somebody to stay with X. And then I went back to the hospital and then I was right at my daughter, my, my wife's, I'm holding her shoulder and she's more calm than any movie pregnancy giving labor I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, and, um, it was so quick. It was like, Oh, there's the head and there's the body. I'm like, what? That's too fast. But man, seeing something like that is like so unbelievable. And then holding Scarlett and there's nothing, like I said earlier, there's nothing like it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such an amazing, and then when you talk to other dads about it, it's everybody's got the same feeling and the same. Uh, it's a it's a miracle, you know. It is, and and it's Definitely. and it's div. It's not easy to hold on to that too. Let me give you an example. Last night, okay, um, so I was out of town for a week. The kids were with grandmas. We get back. And I had my daughter home for one night before she wanted to go hang out with mommy because mommy had to take care of grandma. Anyway, bottom line is I've like seen my daughter one day in the past two weeks um, in person. And yeah. last night um, I brought her home because she's got school in the morning and daddy's got to take care of all that. And I installed new floors in the bedroom. He's like, where's this story going, man? And I'm trying to instill new like boundaries in the house because this girl has literally slept in bed with mommy and daddy since she was a baby and she's going to be nine in just a couple of months and it's like you're way past sleeping in bed with your parents girl and yeah. she gets that but last night so I, I i put her in her room put her in her bed and she obviously comes out at midnight you know rubbing her eyes dad can i come sleep with you as she does every single night and I said, no. And I put her back in bed. And she fell right back asleep. No, don't clap for me, Nick. I <laughs> felt so bad and terrible. That's, and I was like, why, why, why did I do that? I've only got so much time left where the idea of sleeping in the same bed as her dad is going to be the absolute worst thing that could ever come yeah. across her mind. And I should have just let her do it. And I, I'm like, I woke up this morning and th those are the little things that I was fighting with myself and I felt bad for it. I know I shouldn't, but you gotta, you gotta hold on to those moments, man. Cause they're, they're fleeting. Those, those are, those are struggles, man. Yeah. I one, mean, one of the biggest struggles for me is like, like Lindy for the longest time, she like, you know, you need to be tougher. <laughs> and then when you're tough, you can't laugh after. <laughs> yes <laughs> me, right you know i i'm like like even when x was like two and a half i'm like x you just you just threw that toy and you almost hit your sister in the head you can't just throw stuff like that and then he's looking at me like blank stare and i'm like are you listening to me mm -hmm. he goes yeah i go what did i just say and he goes don't throw the ball in the house. <laughs> hey, close, <laughs> close. Dude, uh, what? But the whole point is, <laughs> you know, like, or I, I, I'd say something and I go, dude, that wasn't cool. You can't do that. And he'd look at me and just go, you know, 
Spider web me. Spider web. <laughs> but and then I'd laugh because it's hilarious. It and then is. My wife's like you can't laugh. You gotta. You gotta stick to your guns. You have to. You have to find your mean voice that almost scares them, but not scares them too much. And I'm like, I can't do that. Yes. It's actually it's all or nothing for me, you know. It's, I'm this is true. I've, 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 wit- a, I've got I've a witness this with him. So Yesterday, yeah, I'm go. I'm in the bathroom. I forgot to put the toilet seat down. I'm doing something like fixing something in the shower. The baby comes in, throws his toys in the toilet again, and I'm like, Liam just got the meanest voice. My wife's like, he's 18 months. You can't you can't give him the mean voice. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Laugh at him. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty funny, but well, the, it is. Yeah. It's tough, man. It's tough. Yeah, it's like it's it's yeah. It's so weird being a parent. Like I have six kids, and my oldest is twenty three, my youngest is eighteen months. So I'm like, wow, going through all of it again, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so. I don't remember all. And this how old are you? Else. If you don't mind my asking, I'm forty two. Forty two. Yeah. JP, how old are you? Forty seven. Wow. And so I've I, I got a bonus kid too, just like you. So my daughter, my bonus kid, I'm stepdad. Uh, she's 17, going on like 37, and uh, my son's 11, and my daughter's eight. So I got a, a fairly late start as far as you know being yeah. a dad is concerned. Um, is and I did the Wikipedia on you. I did my research. Uh, same thing. You are what the pros say an older starting dad. Yeah, and sure. you know what? I, I wouldn't change that for the world. I mean, I got all that stupid young out of the way. And now no, it, I think you just per- perfectly, perfectly described it. It's the stupid young out of the way. Yeah. And uh, I'm really glad I did it when I did it. And it's funny because all my friends that are my age, their kids are in college or older. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when kids come over to play, say they're, way older than my kids or, you know, I'm finding, we're finding kids now that that we just moved back to LA. We're finding more kids, their age kind of stuff. But the tough thing that's been really weird lately. And this is the thing that's killing me for kids the most is the whole COVID thing. Right. So my daughter just had her birthday in January and both of her friends that were supposed to come over, both had COVID or their families had COVID. So they didn't come over. And the only friend that could come over with was X's friend. So he comes over and we're like, hey, so um, Scarlett's friends couldn't come over today. So could you give her some attention too? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Because yeah. she just wants to play with a kid, man. Yeah. And right. it's been difficult. I mean, even yeah. you got parents that are overly protective and rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, the... the things that they got going mandates, et cetera, et cetera. And all the social distancing. I mean, and thankfully um, in our cases, our kids are still pretty young and they're very, you know, they got those tough shells that it's not going to affect them as much, but the fact that they haven't had that typical social interaction that they get prior to COVID. I mean, I'm curious to see what the long-term effect is that's going to be on them. Um, It's going to be tough, man. Yeah. And and how, how they're going to, you know, take all that as they get older thankfully they're lifting what is it today the first the day of this recording march 1st 2022 we're 10 days away um at least in oregon and i believe mm-hmm. california is doing it today but lifting the whole indoor mask mandates um right. and school so they're gonna get a little bit of normalcy back when it comes to that here in just a couple of weeks so looking forward to that and hopefully we just shift right back in into normalcy as long as world war three doesn't you know happen on our soil i know huh yeah. You know, I, I got a. It came up. It came up in the feed the other day. Um, I talk about Phil. You guys, as you getting to know him, uh, JP and Nick. I mean, this guy's inspiring. Um, he's in arguably like the biggest rock band in the world, um, but he's also in a band called Phil X and the Drills with Danny Spreewell. Yeah. I, I like to call him Danny Depp. You know and. <laughs> <laughs> this suit is Phil, you're, you're very inspiring. And I came up in a feed the other day. I think it was your birthday last year in Nashville and your wife surprised you. Um, she knew this was going on. She's cooking all this food. You don't know what it's for. You think it's your birthday, but nobody can come over cause it's COVID. 
Right. And, you know, literally tell them what happened, man. Cause so it was the, the preface to that is that my wife is such a generous and loving and uh, community kind of person that she, uh, we fed police stations during COVID when we were in Nashville. Um, and when we lived in LA before we lived in Nashville, it was still under COVID and we were, we could feed hospitals, but in Nashville, we couldn't feed hospital workers because you needed a special permit and we didn't have that. So we were feeding fire stations and police departments. So we, we, I basically drove like a police department. There's a day shift and a night shift. So she was cooking for over a hundred people. We would take yeah. lunch in the day and then I would go back and take dinner for the night shift. And it's, I mean, it's barbecue and the sides and a peach cobbler with ice cream. She, it's everything. It's pe- mm-hmm. And we bring the plates and the forks and the knives and stuff, and throw it in bags after she, her heart is in that. And they appreciated it so much because I drove dinner there in a blizzard in Nashville, like sliding all over the place. And then I got there and the police chief gave me one of the, these the special medallion that they only give to like, uh, I don't know, people that wow. special people. So it was pretty amazing. And he goes, and this is how we give it to people. He put it in his hand, gave me a firm handshake, handshake and left the coin slash medallion in my hand. And this is for you guys. You guys just, it was, today was amazing. Thank you so much. And we took pictures and they knew I played with Bon Jovi. So they were kind of excited about that. And then uh, Captain Jimmy, this is my number. You ever need anything, you let me know. Oh. I'm like, wow, this is great. But it was <laughs> funny. So, and then, um, so I came in and police chief, he's going, hey guys, I want you, you guys didn't see these guys earlier, but they fed the day shift and you guys are the night shift. And this is Philip. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's never Philip. <laughs> so, that that leads to the story where that uh, Brian brought up. It's my birthday. My wife is cooking for an army again, and there's only like maybe another couple coming over and some friends and some neighbors. And I'm like, "What's with all the food?" She goes, "I can't tell you." you know? <laughs> I'm like, "So uh, why is there a a table on the sidewalk in front of the house?" She goes, "I can't tell you." She's cooking and doing all this stuff. And then I'm like, okay, she, she goes, what time is it? Okay, now I can tell you, go outside. So I go outside and there's a parade mm-hmm. of the entire Brentwood Police Department. Oh, wow. Singing yeah. happy birthday out their megaphone speaker, car speakers. And I'm like, what is that? And, and she fed them all. So yeah. she, the table was for, she put, they put all the food on the table. Everybody took their food to go. They sang happy birthday. The police chief gets out of the car and goes, Hey, never Philip. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> and Captain Jimmy's there. It was, it was pretty amazing. It was, uh, Oh, wow. And you know, Give even, me chills. even John Bon Jovi texted me and said, what the hell? You got a police parade for your birthday? That's so crazy awesome. Good so, stuff, man. That's a great story. That's, that's my you wife, know? man. Yeah. That's what my wife does, man. She she cares for other people. She just tries to do special she things. She does. The special people in her life. And uh, she's always thinking of others. Yeah. She's amazing. More often than not, behind every great dad, and there wouldn't be us without those moms out there, man. So, yeah, you know, for sure. Super exactly. duper props to all the moms out there as well. Um, yes. Uh, Phil, Brian, we're getting near. We're not quite I know, done. I ha- we're getting I have near. One more thing that, I have one more thing that he needs to, to address. Because, of course. Because the reason why I called him the other day, we, we talked for, I don't know, a couple of hours, was Phil, he's, this guitar is like an appendage. It's like another arm. It's a part of him, the way he plays it. And he went and, and did this contest. And I want you to tell tell everybody about this contest because I was watching and you were inspiring young and old kids to adults that maybe are, are playing in bands or not playing, but they're trying to do your, your leads in this song. And there's a contest going on and, and it, it inspired me, dude, you lifted me up on a day that I needed it. 
And it put a big old smile on my face. And that's when I text you. And I thought you butt dialed me. And you're like, no, dude, I was trying to call you. And uh, we <laughs> talked for like two hours. So, oh, yeah. Uh, tell everybody about it, please. Well, OK, so I also play with a band called Kurt Dimer. And that's it's a band and a guy, Kurt Dimer. And uh, we recorded a record together and we did a bunch of dates last fall, like 45 dates supporting uh, Jeff Tate all over the U.S. And um, so there's one song that we wrote together called Naive. And it's one of those solos that it just has, it's full of what I call Phil exisms. Like it's a particular <laughs> style of guitar playing. It's just like a, quirky, a little quirky in it and a little... Uh, some of my note choices wouldn't be of the usual variety. Um, and then licks, there's, there's, you know, it's just full of Phil X stuff. And I thought I should do a contest. And if I do a contest, it'll be this solo. So I ended up posting, I started calling all my people, like gear people. And I ended up getting some of the best prizes. Yeah. <laughs> and at first I was going to have a few prizes and winner take all. And then the more I talked to people and the more prizes I got, now we have first, second, and third place. And the first place being an Epiphone uh, SG Classic guitar, which I played in the announcement video, and it's amazing. So I was blown away by that, and I got, uh, I just got a box here from JHS Pedal. So I got a, you know, JHS involved, I got uh, Friedman amplifiers involved, I have Supro involved, I have... Uh, uh, Ernie Ball involved. I have uh, MXR, uh, way huge pedals. Uh, the list goes on and on. And it's funny because I, I just called out to so many people and I got straps from Dog Tired. Uh, but there's a bunch of prizes that all places get. It's like they all get a box of strings from Ernie Ball. They all get a bag and a, t a bag of coffee and a T-shirt from Good Death Wish Coffee. They all get straps. It's your shirt. All, yeah, go yeah, ahead. They yeah, they all get. They all get. You know, everybody's, I mean, it's it's going to be a fun thing. And then I also have Richard Fortis from Guns N' Roses and Rick Beato, who is Mr. Music on YouTube as the other two judges. Oh, wow. So, so it's going to be, and we're going to do a Zoom thing like this to announce the winner. So it's pretty exciting. What well, is the, the yeah, what is the Go time ahead. frame of this? When's the final day to enter? The final day to enter, people have time. It's, it's, uh, almost two weeks from now it's uh, march 12th okay and uh and then by the end of march we will announce the winner i mean it's just it's going to be about just getting everybody together to be able to do the announcement and uh the cool thing about it is some kids are tearing it up man yeah that's what i'm saying some, some kids i'm like i blame it on parenting <laughs> being a dad <laughs> if this kid can shred that's good parenting Right. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, there's that and there's older guys and medium. And I've, I've been kind of like, you know, at, at the beginning when, when Brian brought it up, I was like, yeah, it's going pretty good. But I've, I've seen some submissions that I'm just, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, there's a, there's so many little Phil X-isms that, you know, somebody will get this one and this one and that one, but not that one. And somebody will get this one, but not that one. And then it's just all about I'm not looking for someone to nail it. I want to see mojo and fun because the, the thing I hear mostly about how I am on stage is people see my joy. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I want to see in these contest submissions. I want to see the joy. That's so what I was are, seeing. Like, that's what I was saying. You were inspiring. I was watching you post these, these videos on your social media, which were getting around 10 to 20,000 views of yeah. somebody in their room somewhere USA or in the world trying to, to be like you. And I'm like, that's Phil. That's my boy. <laughs> like we go back and I'm watching people inspired by you. And that's all we can do as artists is want to try and inspire and connect. And I'm watching you do it. And I'm like watching the interaction and I was sitting on my couch right there watching it, falling down the rabbit hole of this and, and seeing your inspiration. And it got me excited. And I had to reach out and say thank you for inspiring me, you know, because 
that's what we, that's, and the, so when that's what we talked about for like two hours, yeah. you know, that, yeah. that thing. It's that, amazing. And, you know, you, you and, try and get as an artist. And as know? a so result. thank you for doing that. Yeah. yeah. And, and as a result, Brian, Phil, here we are. Thank here you. Here we are. Exactly. <laughs> now we're getting real, real close to the end of our time here. We've got a segment we like to call fast five. Phil, Nick's going to ask you five random quick questions. I'm probably going to add a couple of them at the end and uh, they're fun. They're lighthearted, easy questions, nothing controversial here. And here we go. All right. What's your favorite venue to play? Wait, what? Favorite venue. Venue. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, dude. Okay. I mean, Wembley Stadium. Nice. There you go. Don't get much bigger than that. Okay. Do that anybody that's anybody played Wembley Stadium on Tadcast yet? Hey, that's awesome. I remember when we were, you and I were the only ones, we were moving you from Vegas back to LA. Yeah. And you showed me a photo. And I think you just played in Brazil with like the Foo Fighters. and Yeah, it was the Rock and Rio. Yes. And yes. And he, he goes like this. Look at this. That was like, less than 40 hours ago this is what i was doing and uh i started laughing because you and i were moving shit out of the garage and into a, 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 you know the back of a truck and oh, there yeah. was a photo of you in front of a hundred thousand people and how you had the chance to meet you know uh dave grohl and everybody and hang out with them you know yeah that was pretty rad Amazing. i'm gonna go yeah. ahead and drop i love dave grohl if we can get yeah dave on the podcast Dude, he's <laughs> and he, you know what? He, hanging out with him, like I was going to go see some of the other bands, but uh, I had met Pat Smear a few times because our yeah. daughters around the same age, and they're both named Scarlett. So we, and then we're both guitar nuts. So mm -hmm. he said, "Hey, I'm backstage. Come, come and see me." So I went to once I got into the Foo Fighters dressing room, just stayed there until they went on. It was just talking. <laughs> they're asking me. I'm hey. like, I want to, you know, quiz. <laughs> Dave on stuff, and he's like, "So the Bon Jovi thing? Holy shit!" And then I, and like, <laughs> I just watched so they their horror movie. Bon oh my god, I would love to spend a day in a mansion with those guys and just bullshit and drink beers and fuck around all day. There these you guys, go. They're so fun, dude. They're so fun. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? A billboard? Yeah. Wow. It would be. Uh, I can't believe I'm uh, stumped. Um, it would be, it would be this. Yeah. Nice. Because this yeah. is an SG. It's a one of a kind Gibson SG painted like Eddie's. Yes. I wanted to have an ultimate tribute to the king that, you know, just my, you know, uh, salute to a fallen hero. And because uh, that was devastating to me. And uh, yeah, it was devastating to a lot of people. Everybody, man. yeah. It, it, but I, uh, so I had that done, and my two buddies up in Canada, Scott and uh, Johnny, they they painted it and routed it and and made it like a Frankie. But it's it's even got here. It's plugged in. I got to be careful. It's even got the seventy one quarter, and it's got the eighties reflectors. Oh Ooh. man! Hey, and, and, awesome. so that for me. It would just be the billboard would be that guitar and miss you. Nice. You, you said that's it. plugged in. Give us a little something. Okay. Yes. Plugged Wait, in. No, me, man. I can't do that shit for free anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not playing. My fingers, uh, I haven't played so much. I gotta, they need a break today. <laughs> okay, okay. Fair All enough. Right. All right, Nick, come on, let's go. We got more. Okay, your favorite restaurant. Yeah, it's not so fast. Time. I'm sorry. Yeah, All right. your your favorite restaurant in your hometown. In my home, oh, isn't there anymore? Um, I'm gonna say, uh, oh man, that's tough. Yeah, what if it's not there anymore? I gotta go for new favorite second place. restaurant. <laughs> yeah, second place. Uh, I have okay, Christina's on the Danforth in Toronto. Okay, not that not it wasn't the food. It was because I used to go there with my parents. And my dad would make me get up and play bazooki. Yeah. <laughs> when you're home, what is your favorite meal to cook for your kids? Um, wow. Oh, man. And the wife isn't around. 
Yeah, and the wife's not around. It sounds like she does a lot of the cooking. <laughs> Chocolate chip pancakes and bacon. Ooh. You and my daughter would get along famously. Just saying. That's Dude, that's, my son would be like, can I have chocolate chip pancakes this morning? I'm like, sure, buddy. I, I'd make it. And then she's like, can we have bacon too? I'm like, of course. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. We're sizzling and flipping and doing the whole thing. I do the whole thing, man. Nice. I'm not afraid. Last question. What's your best parent, your best parenting accomplishment? Like what's the biggest thing you're proud of as being a parent? Um, I think that, uh, I think how my kids uh, love each other because obviously they're brother, sister, and sometimes they're at war. Yeah. But when, when they uh, really care for each other, uh, that was really important to my mom. I got it from her. Very cool. She just, uh, she just ingrained in us that, that you guys got to be close forever. And my kids, they just love each other so much. And I think both me and my wife, we, we really, we, we really nail that importance in. Love that. Awesome. Good stuff. Beautiful, All right. Man. I, I've got a couple more I'd like to add. Um, if you were to offer a singular bit of advice to any new father out there, what would it be? Whoa. Um, to, uh, I think it's for me, I had to roll with the punches because they hurt your feelings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta move on. <laughs> <They're kids. laughs> they hurt your feelings. They, they, they hurt your feelings. You and move on, and the next day they do it again. <laughs> yeah, you got you gotta you gotta roll with it because uh, they yeah. they don't even know sometimes, you know. Yeah, they it's don't just, realize they're hurting their feelings. And oh, that's a, that's that big pickle of being a parent. They don't realize calling daddy a dick's not a nice thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, my wait. Dude, so I used to. I got to. I got to say this because my my son was like he, he was so young, but he had he always already had this gift of gab kind of thing, and and he said uh, we would wrestle and stuff. And he'd, he'd be like, "I'm gonna kick you in the nuts," and I was like, "Dude, that's that's not cool." <laughs> so I go away for a couple of weeks. I come back, and he goes, "I'm gonna kick you in the French fries," and I'm like, "What the heck is that?" <laughs> And he goes, well, mommy doesn't want me to say nuts, so I'm saying French. <laughs> Wait, this this is going to escalate. Yes. <laughs> so I say, dude, nuts, French fries, it's all off limits, right? Yeah. So the next day he comes up and he goes, daddy, I'm going to kick you in the off limits. <laughs> well, at least he's listening, right? Right. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. They come up, they protest this stuff. Yes. Them. Say differently. <laughs> I think that's my, my favorite part about being a dad is just watching them mold and grow into these crazy personalities. That, like every day, it's a new thing, and like having yeah, them is just so awesome. Because like all my older kids are they're already out doing their stuff. My little guy, every day, it's like oh my gosh, a new word or a new phrase, and a lot of stuff doesn't make a lot of sense, but but he thinks it's hilarious. Well, and it, and it is too because they say. Like even my daughter, she says stuff now and, and, but I mean, they, they, they hear a lot of songs mm -hmm. and my kids love singing. They sing all the time. So she comes in one day, she goes, and I don't know, they get it from TV shows and they get it from this and they get it from that, but she says, it's raining tacos. And I'm like, where? My that sounds amazing. daughter, <laughs> my daughter won our local. It's called the, uh, the Pear Blossom Junior Royalty Pageant. You can only enter it when you're four years old. So you get one shot, one shot to make it big. And she friggin' sang that song and won. <laughs> yeah. Four years ago, it's raining tacos, raining tacos. I was like, oh, that's so funny you said that, man. Ah, oh, love baby. that. Oh, and, and, and last, I had to hype up my daughter. Story for me. So my wife works at a bank. My son, my little guy just learned about money, right? So we go in the bank to see mommy. He's like, mommy, where's the money? <laughs> wow. I was like, wow, how did you associate bank with money? He's like, because you have a card. So I was funny. Wipe the card and I get cash. There it is. All yeah. right, I've got one one final question, and and I think with Phil X, it's going to hit a little bit differently because this typical question I ask, um, 
you probably already have, so I'm going to reword it just a tad. Phil X, you can play a show with any artist, living or dead, that you have not played with before. Who would it be? Um, it would be... Uh, wow. I think it would be... I think it would be Dave Grohl on drums. Okay. And uh, and John Paul Jones on bass. I mean, basically the Crooked Vultures, but with me yeah. instead of John Paul. There it is. <laughs> All right. I was jealous. I was well, jealous of that lineup. <laughs> so 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 um, here's mine because this is this blew me away. Um, you, what I mentioned this earlier, guys. He's he's got his own band called Phil X and the Drills. He's not only a badass guitar player, he's a badass songwriter. Um, <clears throat> you write fun songs, you write serious songs. Um, you have a double album, is that correct? Is the second no, half coming out? I'm doing it's volumes, but I don't think okay. it's going to Yeah. It's not what? Um, there was going to be a volume one and a volume two, but now I think we're going to, the next batch of songs is coming out on another label, so it's not going to be volume two. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Well, tell everybody, because Nick's going to get a kick out of this. Um, you know, you and Danny are Phil X in the drills, but you always have a different drummer playing with you. So yeah. Nick will get a kick out of this. Give the list of all the drummers who played on this, this oh, man. You know, two volumes so, record. Yeah, this is okay. So on, on volume one, we had uh, Taylor Hawkins, um, <laughs> Glenn Sobel from Alice Cooper, Matt oh. Chamberlain. He just had come off tour with Soundgarden. Mm -hmm. Uh Randy Cook, who's my buddy from Toronto and plays with Smash Mouth and everybody. Um, Brent Fitz, who plays with Slash. And uh, I'm missing one. Um, I'm just going to keep rifling off these names, though. There's uh, uh, on the new record coming out, we have uh, Tommy Lee, Ray Luzier from Korn, uh, Liberty DeVito, because we met on the Hired Gun documentary set. Um, that's from uh, that's that's from Billy Joel. Bill, Billy Joel, yeah, yeah. He played for them for thirty years or something. Uh, I got Tico on a tune. We had a day off in Vegas, and I said, "Hey man, would you go into a studio and record a drill song?" And he's like, "Wow, I'd it for you." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah." <"What> <laughs> so got that, and um, there's also Abe Laboreal Jr., who is one of my favorite drummers. He played with Paul McCartney, and he came back. He came to town, and he goes. Uh, you know, he was playing with Paul McCartney and then he, I go, I thought you were coming back last week. He goes, yeah, I had to do a couple of dates with Eric Clapton. So he's, <laughs> that was rough. But all these guys have everybody, Brian Tishy, uh, all these guys, they're amazing drummers that just, um, that just were in the band for 90 minutes in the studio. You know, whether it was Kenny Aronoff, Kenny Aronoff comes in, he brings like, I don't know, 75 snares. Which one do you want to use? That kind of thing. Uh, Taylor Hawkins show, shows up with the two drumsticks and a bag of Jack in the Box and flip-flops. And he's getting, he sits behind the drum, kicks the flip-flops off, and he goes, okay. Uh, we run it. And everybody's in the band. Dan says, hey, I really think we should do this in the second verse. And I'm like, excellent. And Taylor's like, hey, let me do this before the last chorus. And I go, great. But you just got to go nuts at the end. And he's like, done. So we do three takes and then he's done. So he walks out, enter other drummer. It was like an amazing way to record. That's awesome. God, I'd wow. love to see a behind the scenes video of that one, man. Well, we got a lot of the drummers, we got footage of a lot of the drummers because I did want to do a, a, a documentary until everything went awry and I got busy with Bon Jovi and then the COVID thing happened. I really wanted to do a documentary on drummers and call it Give the Drummer Some. Because even like, Seven minutes of Tommy Lee and seven minutes of Taylor Hawkins is riveting. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah it is. Can you, know, you say so 10 million views on YouTube? Easy peasy. <laughs> so I've like, yeah. I hung out with Randy Cook when uh, Steve, Har Steve Harwell is a good friend of mine from Smash Mouth. So oh, yeah. I play the area. Steve always texts me and like, I get to come out, bring the kids backstage. And last time it was Father's Day and Randy came out and hung out with my son, who's a drummer, and signed a bunch of drumsticks for him. Talked to oh, him. Really? Really one of the coolest things ever. And you know, Smash Mouth's not the biggest band, but he was like, my son was like, Dad, that was that was Smash Mouth. They sing that Walking on the Sun song. And I'm like, yeah. 
That's that awesome. is amazing. All you right, say, yeah. gentlemen, I love all of you. Uh, we got to, we're way over. We got to cut this thing off. So I have to do the thanking town. Thanking time, Mr. Brian Hopkins of Elvis Monroe. Thank you for putting this one day to, together today, sir. Uh, Phil X, man, um, I would love the opportunity to put another hour in with you sometime in the future. Uh, uh, so I'm going to uh, put that in the back of my mind and talk to them. And hopefully okay. you would come on. That's amazing. It's been such a pleasure and uh, an honor to hang out and talk with you. Thank you for taking the time, man. It's much appreciated. Well, I, I appreciate you guys having me, man. Um, it's, this is this is kind of like this kind of thing has been kind of saving the whole uh, isolation. Yeah. Uh, and this is amazing because we're all in different cities, too. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. But I'm sitting what, in Vegas. What really makes this cool is that we're just this is like I don't feel like I'm being interviewed. I feel like we're just having coffee in a, yeah. in, you know, somewhere in a in a diner. So it's pretty awesome. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And Brian, thanks for having thanks for being here. And yeah. uh, hooking us up. Absolutely. Yeah, man. of course. Much these guys are awesome. I'm, I'm proud of both of these guys. Um, they're doing, they're doing great stuff and, and they're inspiring and sharing their stories and reaching out. And so thanks Phil for jumping on here with us as well. Much. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Woo! And to everyone watching, by the way, this episode has been brought to you locally by Fox KMVU 26. Thank you very much uh, to everyone watching on YouTube or listening anywhere worldwide. Thank you very much. We'll catch you on the very next episode next week. Have a great rest of your day. See you.